Hey, 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 it's Tuesday. It is August 16th. I'm John Zadar, a.k.a. the Stocks Wizard. Not to be confused with that dude you've seen in the Ten Commandments movie. You are watching On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on OTC and penny stocks that got potential. They got something going. Maybe they got some technicals on the charts. It just looks like they're ready to break out. We catch that without any news. But they may have news. This is lots of news I've looked at over the last six days, actually. There are six days worth of news there. Oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. No financials or anything like that. It's stuff they're actually doing. So I consider it juicy news. Now those are all penny stocks, obviously. But 99% of that news is from the OTC market and we do look at major exchange stocks. Because any stock under $5 is a penny stock. Doesn't matter what market it's sold on. So we could be looking at those no problem. And the advantage of a stock on the major exchange is when you trade it, you don't have to pay any transaction fees. My OTC trades on TD Ameritrade, I'm paying almost $14 round trip. I gotta make that back before I decide to get out of a stock. And sometimes that can definitely be a problem. So I like trading on the major exchanges because there's no transaction fees. As soon as it starts to rise, I'm in the money. <laughs> So we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I start all my initial research on an OTC stock, simply because it's never outdated. The OTC is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Do you know how easy that makes doing my research? I do a lot. Can you imagine going over to Google and having to sort through decades of information for every single stock? No, sir. That is my last resort, not my first. I love the OTC markets. It saves me a lot of hassles and headaches. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. I see our share volume is still over 10 billion, not by much, but we are in there. She hit what, a high of 15 billion last week and started falling again, but that was after going down to ugh, the low sevens. So there's a lot of volatility in our volume right now and she's like dead center right now. Our dollar volume is still low. We're still at $1.4 billion on our market and our trades have just gotten over our low average of $250,000. We'd like to see that get up over $300,000 at least now. Used to be up near $500,000, $600,000 trades a day, but that was ancient days. That was a long, long time ago. So I've got some interesting stocks that were moving today and they have reason to be moving. And I think some of them still have a good chance of continuing to move, but we're gonna have to watch the bounce. You know how a lot of these stocks are. News comes out, they take off, they come back down, but they're not done. It is all about entry. Unless you can get into these before you know the news, that'd be neat. Let's see what I got for us. This first stock we're taking a look at is exceptional. I mean, that's its name. Ticker XCPL, Exceptional Business Services Corporation. Now, Exceptional did have some big news today. It's the kind of news we're always looking for. And this stock took off out of the gate this morning. But of course, you did have a pullback. But I think there is more to be gotten here because the story isn't fully told yet. Matter of fact, the more I looked, the more confused I got. The company's already got something going on, but it just doesn't look right. And how it's going to fit into what's about to happen, I just don't know. I'll explain to you what I'm talking about as I go along here. So she finished the day at 0062 with only 36% gains at the end of the day. She's on the pink tier, she is current, she's got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent as well. Now in every single video I tell you, look for these green ticks on the otcmarkets.com website. This is extra verified information. And when you're looking at a pink, you need all the verified information you can get. This information is verified by an unbiased third party, the otcmarkets.com website. That's their business. This is what they do. So to see this information up here all green, that's a bonus. That makes me feel secure about this pink. So what does this company do? Well, it looks like they do a lot. They tell us here that the company helps consumer retailers tell their story with our professional suite of marketing and sale enablement services consisting of in-store product demos field services, inbound and outbound call centers, and digital product development and customer experience management. Our clients are big box retailers, fast moving consumer packaged goods, and government and Fortune 2000 businesses leveraging our shared services capabilities. 
Sounds like they got a lot of prestigious companies working with them, the government. Sounds like they're doing a lot. And when you jump into one of their most current financial filings, this is a list of their subsidiaries that they put in here. Now, I'm not going to read them all, but they got everything here from combined payroll to exceptional maintenances to talent services. There's 13. 13 subsidiaries listed here. But we ain't done yet. Wait till we take a look at the news. So they've got a lot going on. So I start to get confused at this point. So before I tell you how I'm confused, let's look at the relative volume of today. The news was big. It jumped almost, well, a little over six times her normal volume. 9.5 million to 69 million. So that's a pretty good increase. What is her share structure? Well, let's see what we have. I always go to the unrestricted shares for my float. When you compare that to restricted shares, which cannot go on the open market, unrestricted can. Ta-da, that's your float. So even if they list a float down here, I just don't see the point of taking a chance on that number. So I just use the unrestricted shares. We got about 133 million in this company, which isn't bad. Don't get spoiled with super low floats of 20 and 10 and 5 million. That's not a bad float at all. 133 million. What are our financials? All right, this is where I started to get confused. When you have that many subsidiaries and you're working with the government and Fortune 2000 companies, you figure you're probably making money. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And we don't see any warnings up here. Nothing looks bad. So, looking over the last four years, remembering we got to take three zeros, put them behind all of the numbers down here. This is $11.5 million they did in 2018, and it's been falling ever since. $8 million, $9 million, $6 million. It's just getting smaller, and when you come down to quarterly, it's even worse. It looks like they're going out of business. Something's not right here. And again, as I said, when we look at the news, it gets even more confusing. Though it really doesn't have anything to do with the news that came out today, I would like to know what's going on. So, disclosures. We got anything current over here? I do believe we do. All right. We have a late filing here, and I've got this opened up to show you. A late filing. They've got earnings coming up, and if they can't file on time, you got to put in one of these. It's a late notice filing. And what it basically is is a place for you to list your excuse and then you know get your five days which is what it comes down to their excuse is that they're finalizing financials for the reverse merger well that's a solid excuse we'll go along with that one okay they're going to be late because they're taking care of business we got gotcha. you then they tell us down here please note that the filing of this notification grants the issuer five additional calendar days if it's a quarterly and 15 more days if it's an annual report so by just filing this you buy yourself five days now this is a little trick i think a lot of companies use because obviously people are anticipating the earnings right and this comes out before the earnings does and when this comes out for some reason the stock jumps I don't know why, but it jumps. They're happy they're not going to be late. I don't know. But looking back at their disclosures, we see that they had a late notification back here in May, a late notification in February, a late notification in November. I don't think these are all reverse mergers. Now, I haven't gone through. Maybe they got rock solid reasons there too. Or maybe they're trying to get bounces out of every single one. Or maybe they just can't file on time. Maybe that's a problem with them. I don't know, but we do see a pattern there. So let's get on over to that news now. So this is the news, and I've rolled this back because I wanted to show you that they are talking about their acquisition they made today. Right up here, Exceptional Business Services announces signing of reverse merger acquisition agreements with Sentiment Capital Holdings. That is actually out today. Now I'm all the way back here to March. I had to do that in my head out loud. March 15th is the first time they talked about this. LOI to acquire Sentiment Capital Holdings. And then right behind that, they went ahead and did a partnership with Green Star Products. Then again, they tell us that they are launching their first product from Sentiment Capital Holdings. So they're already doing business with them, even though they haven't got the acquisition done. And there was a jump in price as soon as they started talking about this, but it wasn't on this day, the 15th, 
and it wasn't on the 5th of the next month, April. It was right here in the middle. No, it was not with the Green Star products on the 24th. It was on the 30th. It took a big bounce, and I'm really not sure if it was something they knew ahead of time or it was just a delayed reaction. Haven't got a clue. Then here in May, they had a share reduction. Now, they got 170 million outstanding shares. They took out 2 million. It's not a huge number, but anything you take off the shares is good. So we had a share reduction there. Another joint venture with Security Sys here in May. Then they went to make another deal to acquire a communications company, MCAT Media. But this news press that came out uh, last month in July canceled that deal. Both were in agreement. There was no animosity. They just decided not to do it. So they're not getting MCAP. But all the rest of these that we just looked at, Green Star, uh, Security Sys, these are new subsidiaries. They're new acquisitions. And I don't know what they're doing with them. Haven't got a clue because they don't address that in the news press that came out today. So let's take a look at it. So they tell us here that Exceptional Business Service Corporation and Sentiment Capital Holdings, a privately held neurodata technology company, today announced that the two companies have signed an acquisitions agreement, whereby the company, Exceptional, will acquire two operating subsidiaries of Sentiment Capital Holdings. They will receive advanced research machines, also known as ARM, and they will get Xeris Trading and Holdings. And the acquisitions will be accounted for as reverse mergers. However they laid out the deal, it is going to be considered a reverse merger. Now, what are these two subsidiaries? Well, they're actually doing business right now. ARM is the company behind the Mantis Crypto Trading Technology and owns Sentiment.io. Xeris is a multi-asset class trading technology and will complement ARM's high-frequency trading platform. The office for the combined enterprise will be established in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when you go back to their company information here, you can see they've already put in that they are in North Carolina, right there. Now, when I was reading the information, they were in Texas and Chicago. I do believe it is. So they've already made the move from their old address to the new address on paperwork. So this deal is definitely going to be finalized. They also go on to tell us that the acquisitions transactions are expected to close prior to the end of August. So before the end of this month. So we have about two weeks before this is to close and the company doesn't see any reason why it shouldn't happen. So let's go take a look at that chart, see how much she rose today, how far she fell, and if she looks like she's lining up for a bounce. Because as I said, this company has a lot of subsidiaries. They've just made more deals, joint ventures, new acquisitions, yet we don't see any sort of revenues coming in from their own activities. And now they've got these two different types of companies coming in. One is a trading company and one is a crypto trading company. I don't know how that fits into everything else they do. Are they abandoning what they used to do or is it this just an add-on? I'm not really sure. Let's go take a look at that chart while I figure this out. All right, we're over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform from TD Ameritrade. You need one, you want to back up, just go over there, sign up for a free trading account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Seriously, all you got to do is keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free. Now, do me a favor before I get started here. Don't forget to remind me, I want to show you a technical play I came across today. Party. Party. Can you remember that? You got to remind me. I'll forget. All right. We are looking at exceptional ticker XCPL. This is a four hour, six month chart, and we have looked at this before. I can see my lines here for my surge the bottom of the surge, the top of the surge, finding the center of the attitude line, which is pretty much a Fibonacci tool. And I like to see if she's going to hold that. And this is all the way back on March 30th. This is that surge I told you came in between the news of March 15th to April 5th. And on the 24th, you had the news about that green sport or green star company. But that's not the 30th. But this is when it took off running. Had a few bounces in here and she fell right down onto the bottom where, where the surge started, which is where she was. 
So she gave everything back and was riding across here. Hit a low bubble here recently. We had a huge spike here on what day was that? The 22nd. Again, this is when they announced that they were going to be merging with sentiment. Every time they talk about the merge with sentiment, she spikes. This was another one. And then again today. But as you can see, let me back this up. Is it as I perceive it? Yeah, it is. What you got going here are lower highs. It's like the very first time they mention it is when you get your peak interest and your peak price. The next time they mention it, it was a while. You know, there's some newcomers now. Woo, doesn't get as high, but it's pretty high. Now it's the third time we're getting down to closing it. And I remind you, they haven't closed the deal yet. They've signed it. First they announced a letter of intent. Then they announced that they were going to do the deal, then they sign the deal. Well, they haven't closed the deal yet, so there's still gonna be another one. And I would anticipate that that would probably be even smaller than this bounce. They get smaller and smaller as people get accustomed to it. Now, some may say it's built into the price. Well, I'm telling you, it doesn't look like there's any price built in there for this merger. This is all we've gotten right now. We've had some big bounces, but nobody's added value to the price of the stock yet. What we do have here is a breakout, folks. We are coming across the 200 for the second time. Now breaking the 200 is like coming up in water under ice. The first time you hit it, you may crack it, but you're not gonna get through it. The second time you hit it, you may get your arms through it, but you can't get your body through it. The third time you hit it, boom, that's it, you're out of there. So don't expect the first time a price breaks the 200 for it to normally take off. Most of the time it won't. It will come back down and start beating on it again. So this is our second attempt, beating on that ice. Is it more than an arm we're going to get through? The technicals look strong on the four hour right now. As we come in on the current time frames, we may learn some more. Let's come in on that 20 day, one hour view. So we did have a huge jump on the last bit of news about this merger. She went from uh, 0036 up to poo, single zero two. So you're looking at over 500% gains. Wow, wow, that's impressive. 500% gains there. And she did come virtually all the way down. Now she was under the 200. She is up on top of the 200 here. She's struggling. She's falling under it. She's back on top of it. So she did get something out of this rise. Not a whole bunch that brought her up, uh, oh, you know, maybe about uh, 30%. 30% it kicked up. And then today, old news being recycled. I don't mean to say it's old news, but it isn't done yet. You're just telling us you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. And we got another bounce. And yesterday's close started at about 0047 and went up to 0098. So you're looking at almost 100% gains at her ripe high. She has fallen down hard and aftermarket is starting to push up again. Technicals are all pretty strong. I'm not going to say they're ripping, but they're not cold by any means. Five day, five minute. All right, now, just out of curiosity, there's that line and there's the other line. All right, so all the way back on March 30th, this is the bottom of the beginning of that surge. And we're right on it. Look at this. We are right on it from March 30th to August 16th, she hasn't gone anywhere up and down and she's come right back to that very first surge. Like nothing's happened. Like it's it's okay, once you close the deal, we're gonna take off. Honestly, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying for all the time we've been seeing it bounce, we have nothing to show for it because this is exactly where the price was the very first time we heard about the deal with sentiment. And we fell below it at the end of today third time and now she's coming back up technicals well we've got a crossover on our ppo this is a lot like your macd except it works with the percentage of the price your macd works with the literal price so the two of them are very similar but there are some subtle differences we got a crossover on the macd as well it's coming up so that is looking really nice approaching a signal line the rsi is on a strong band right now pushing up pushing up hard that that was a, a good strong jump here so I don't know that she is going to run tomorrow or she's going to take off. The technicals don't show that. The volume has petered off most today. You had a punch after market here, and I'll bet you that was right at the bell, right? That was 10 minutes after the bell. So we are still above the 200. 
And that is the big deal here. You stay above the 200, you got the monkey off your back, you can float like helium given the right wind to just pick you up, you know, like that feather in, in uh, Forrest Gump. Just pick that feather up and carry it away. So the technicals look promising, but I'm not going to say that. What I am going to say is they've got more to come. We need to see what they plan on doing, how they're going to expand on this business, what sort of income are they going to make, and does it meld with what they're already doing, or is that just something we're going to forget about? Obviously, some more DD, but I'd keep my eye on Exceptional because they did just make the deal, <laughs> though they've been talking about it for months and it hasn't actually closed. It is still in the works, and that's what can make a stock jump. So, we're back to ground zero after three months with the merger. Maybe this is where it starts to grow from. Hey, who said that? I sure appreciate that it did. Totally slipped my mind. You're right. I did have a technical play I wanted to share with you. Just real quickly, this was being talked about on Twitter a lot. It was being talked about at a few other forums because it has a great technical. Now, it can't be seen on the five minute. You just got a nice gentle slope growing and growing here. It's looking very positive. But what did they see? What were they looking at? When you come back on the four hour, it's pretty apparent. She was falling down here at a steady decline underneath the 200 tried to break it here and then fell hard obviously had bad financials crashed her head very very hard here has been going sideways for months and they've been waiting for it to get to the 200 to get on top so it could have a breakout well it tried now you see that low bubble it's lower than here so we've actually gone lower this was the low bubble over a 52 week period this is now the low bubble now when you come in here you can see she almost got through the 200 here, but the first time you hit the 200, you're not getting through, right? The second time you hit the 200, you may get your arm through. The third time you make a hole big enough for your body and you can start the climb. And this is what everyone was talking about. She had tested it a couple times and she was coming up out of that dip and it looked like she was gonna rip and she did. And right now she is at $2.03 and if we back up, that original fall started at 307. So it looks like there's another dollar if it just gets up to there. And that is common. That is your big, big cup right there. And then it may get a handle, which would be a dip of about one third of this. And then it would shoot up again before it came down. So I'd be looking for the rest of this cup to finish. And then beyond that, I'd look for the handle, a dip of about one third of this entire recovery area, and then a shoot up. And that's a, a good play right there. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock I got for us. We're now taking a look at a company you're probably real familiar with. This is ticker ILUS, Illustrato Pictures. Now, this company has had a lot of activity over the last 18 months. She's been real busy. This used to be a Karen Courier expert marketplace. Karen Courier likes to salvage and save companies that are distressed and neglected by their management, finds nice pickings over there at the expert market, gets them out of there with a uh, court approval she becomes the custodian doesn't own it she's just cleaning it up at her expense she takes care of all the filings takes care of all the dirty laundry and then gets it back on the open market in pink then she goes and looks for a company that wants this ticker and she does a reverse merger and she makes a commission for doing that and she normally keeps a position right there Karen Kerr is the accountant so she normally sticks with her companies now this company had news come out today they had earnings report come out and it was great it was a fantastic earnings report but the company fell this is to me a great buying opportunity the company's been falling for a long time and this earnings report shows where the company is headed so this is a good time for you to consider this stock not to buy everything you want but this could be a good time to buy some Let's see what I got for you. She finished at about eight cents today with almost 3% drop. She's on the pink tier, she's current, she's got a verified profile on a transfer agent, so she looks good. Now they tell us that Eyeless is a public merger and acquisition investment company operating out of New York, London, and Dubai. Historically, the company has evolved out of the industrial sector, mainly from emergency service products, emergency response vehicles, vehicle conversions, EVs, wearable and tech smart equipment. Eyeless is still looking to acquire other companies that have strong management and potential to grow rapidly. Now this company has been grabbing up lots of companies. These are companies they've bought in the last year and a half, 
firebug group, vehicle converters, bright concept detection and protection system, bullhead products, Georgia Fire and Rescue Supply, and here most recently, Wiki Soft. Yeah, Wiki Soft. Now, really, as far as I can see, this company is into anything that suppresses fire. Firefighting. They sell equipment to fire departments, whether it be their big vehicles or small electric vehicles. They sell them the equipment, the wands and special heads. They've got this one head that goes on the end of the wand that creates an umbrella mist of water. they got a patent on it because it's not about saturating the fire and putting it out. It's about suffocating it. The mist comes out in this umbrella that actually blocks air from coming in. So they've got that. They even are getting into drones but not as you might think. No, they're, they're working on a platform that carries water that hovers up alongside of high-rise buildings, as you see in that picture right now, and puts fires out. This is huge, folks. This can change the way we fight fires and how people can be rescued out of these high-rise high buildings. I think it's exciting. So, what sort of relative volume was around this company today? Well, she normally does $6 million. Today, she did $12 million. Shame she fell on that extra 6 million shares. Share structure, high, very high, 1.2 billion. They've got 1.3 billion outstanding and 2 billion authorized. That gives them about 700 million shares to do business with. They don't have to use money. They can actually use their shares as commerce and buy another company. Financials, well, this is where the story begins. You can see over the last three years, not counting 2021, they weren't doing anything. Things were getting set up. I told you, this company in the last 18 months has been doing a lot. At the end of last year, they did $11 million, and they got to keep about $4 million. And then you look at quarterly, you can see they jumped from a half a million to 2.8 to $3 million. Now, let's just jump straight on over to news. Remember this number, $3 million is what they did the first quarter of 2022. So now going straight to the news that came out today, ILAS confirms its second quarter of 2022 results, including a 553 revenue increase over its previous quarter to $19.6 million. Remember I told you to remember $3 million. That's what they did the very first three months of this year. The second three months that have just passed, they did $19.6 million. What a huge jump from three to 20 million. That's the sort of business I'm talking about. They are into everything fire suppression and they are working around the world and they're just expanding further and further and further. And let's face it, folks, fire doesn't go out of fashion. It doesn't care about economies. It doesn't care about any of the things that the markets consider. No, fires just have their own way of living and dying. And this company is gonna be there for all of them. So I like the company where it's going. I think the potential that they've just shown in the last three months of growth is what we need to be considering. So let's go take a look at that chart and see where we can get into this thing. All right, we are gonna be looking at ticker ILUS. This is six month, four hour. Do not be impressed. There's nothing to be impressed with right now. It is depressed. It is under the radar, folks. I think it's undervalued by a long shot. Now, now that the earnings have come out, we had a high bubble back here of 45 cents six months ago. And right now we are just over seven cents. Under the 200, only tagged it once. Doesn't look like she has any intention of going to it. She's even under the 50. Now, I do wanna go back a year. Is that a 52 week low bubble we got there? No, we're at seven cents. Our low bubble is back here at six cents. But wow, look at all that excitement when she started making all of her deals, acquisitions, getting set up. This is before she was making money, right? Now she's getting all set up and making money and she's way, way, way down here. This is the sort of activity you need after an earnings report like that. Five times her normal income from three to 20 million. Let's come back down to that 20 day, one hour view. So there's your 200. She was on top of it, fell, poked it, and looks like she's just falling further and further. And look at this, pre-market today, with the earnings report out, news press and filings, it dropped to that low bubble. It probably wasn't down here very long. Came back up, hit eight cents, one penny more, and then dropped about 50% of that. All the technicals look very, very weak right now. The only one that shows any determination is maybe a possible crossover on the MACD. 
five day, five minute view. Look at that drop. So she was under the 200 five days ago, got on top of it, stayed up here for two days, took a nice jump, looked like she had head and shoulders above the 200. And then she crashed just before the end of the day yesterday. Couldn't hold her bearings. I mean, totally lost it today. Pre-market, I don't know if this is before or after the earnings report. It's probably after. For some reason, she dropped really, really hard, really fast. Now I'm going to come down to one minute. I'll bet you she wasn't down there a full minute. All right, so she tagged here, fell again, so it was like three minutes she was down here in the low bill. Popped up really fast, came onto the market down here, had a nice pop, looked like she was going to do something, and then just lost it all and went sideways all day. Right now, looks like she's fighting the 50. She is trying to get on the 50 on top of the 200-day uh, haul. The 200 haul is a lot like the 200 day SMA, except it takes current prices into more effect than the 200 day at all. The only thing I can say we got going on right here is we have a crossover on the PPO on the one minute. But if you come down to the five minute, well, yeah, we are on top. Barely. PPO is barely on top. MACD is barely on top. Nothing really looks serious. I'm not looking for a run. I'm not looking for a recovery. I don't know when this is going to move. I'm thinking right now is a good time to be getting into it. Now, I'm not saying buy everything you want. And that's a question. How many of you know how much of a stock you're going to buy before you buy? I don't mean the first purchase. I mean total. It's part of your strategy. You should know, am I buying a thousand shares or am I buying a thousand dollars worth? Whatever. If you're buying a thousand dollars worth, you look at this now and say, well, the low a year ago was six cents and I'm at just under eight cents. And it did a low bubble of seven cents, but it rarely comes down here. Me personally, I may pick up like 30% or that, that would be like $300 worth. I'd pick up $300 worth at this price. Now it may fall, but the chances of it falling are pretty slim. It's not down here very often and it wasn't down there very long. So I would expect this in due time to start recovering back to that 45 cents six months ago. And if it starts to rise, I may have to scale in, which means I'm going to buy more at a more expensive price. But as long as you see it going up, buying at 8 cents and then buying at 10 cents, that's okay because when it hits 12 cents, both are in the money. Both are making profit. Now, of course, it's averaged it out to 9 cents. But my point is it's okay to buy more if it's more expensive, if it's going up because it's all profit. We're now taking a look at a real curious stock. They had a couple filings come out today, a 1AW and an 8K. They had information come out that I don't think anybody was expecting and it caused this stock to run. And you're saying, well, why shouldn't it cause this stock to run? It was about this company. Not really. It was in one fashion. And I'll cut to the meat here, folks. It has more to do with EMGE, Emergent Health Corps. Actually does. They made a deal here at the beginning of the month. They've been working on it, but they finally closed it. Emergent acquired Region Bio Wellness. And along with that, they got a new CEO, Jim Morrison. He used to be the president of L'Oreal. Well, that is what this is all wrapped around, and I'll explain that here in a minute. So she finished today at 0057 with only 159% gains. She's on the pink tier in current, got those green ticks I tell you to look for, but she is a shell risk. That means she's in business, she's just not making any money, and that's never a good thing. Now, they tell us down here that Canagistics is a U.S. corporation that operates its newly acquired subsidiary, which is part of what's going on right now, the Integrity Wellness Group, which was formerly called CanaWorks Holdings, and they got the entire portfolio of CanaWorks. I can show you over here in their most current filing. This is a list of their products. Where are we at? Oh, even further up, right here products so you could put products in it you know just with your search bar and they've got things here for cbd hemp pepsin they have got topicals they've got toothpaste they've got fertilizer they've got all sorts of lozenges and gums lots of different products what they don't have is any money they don't have any revenues coming in that's what makes them a shell risk so what was the relative volume around these crazy uh, filings that came out today, not bad. That's a huge increase. We went from 2 million to almost 75 million shares. What a jump. Let's look at the share structure. Our float, 
Using the unrestricted shares as our float, we have about 184 million. It's a little high, but it's not going to kill us. Not going to kill us at all. Financials, we're not going to see anything, right? Because they're a shell company. We got nothing here for the last three years. And quarterly, we have nothing at all. So they aren't making any money, which is a little strange. They've got a lot of products. They did make some deals here a while ago, which you're going to see here in just a second, because we need to take a look at these filings. This 1AW and this 8K. I'm going to jump into one right now. So we're looking at the 8K. Now what they basically tell us here is that Region Bio Wellness made a deal with Emergent Health Core. And Emergent Health Core got all the assets of Region Bio Wellness. Well, Region Bio Wellness owns 4,000 400 shares series f preferred voting stock shares of this company and now those belong to emergent well it is a controlling share block they tell us right here therefore as a result of the asset purchase agreement there has been a change of control of the registrant Emergent Health Corps is now the holder of the Series F preferred stock representing voting control of this company. So now Jim Morrison is the president and CEO of this company as well. So why this company is running, okay, I can understand that. But shouldn't Emergent be running too? This has now become one of their assets that was unexpected. This was not talked about anywhere. So everybody got excited about this, but Emergent went down and this stock went up. Maybe Jim has plans for this company. I don't know. Let's go take a look at the chart. Well, I can see I've been here before. This is ticker CNGT. This is a six month, four hour chart. And we had a huge rip back here uh, just at the very end of December, December 28th, 29th, 30th. She ran here from about 001 up to two and a half cents roughly, about 24, 100% jump there. And then she gave it all away, fell under the 200, has been bouncing off of this bottom line from the surge where it began, hasn't come below that, tried to get over the 200, has smacked it a few times, hasn't had any success until today's news, which really didn't have a whole lot to do with its value. It's just new management now. Hopefully that management is what everybody's excited about. Technicals are ripping on the four hour, no doubt about that. 20 day, one hour view. She was sitting up here on the 200, fell under it, has been laying down here until today's news. Looks like she was under every single SMA, including the 10. Yeah, she was. Hit that low bubble, perfect timing, and launched up. Our low bubble is down here at 0017. Let's call that 17 to 85. That's the jump you got there. I'm not doing the math. You can see it's pretty huge. And then she fell back, and she's been trying to climb again after market. Technicals are all strong. Yeah, the RSI did fall back, but it is still in the overbought, and everything is pointing up. This still looks good. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute. All right, there was nothing going on until 1230 as I said and it was today she hit that low bubble and then those filings came out and this thing shot and it shot from that low bubble right we are at 0017 call it 17 up to 85 I don't know that's uh 500 percent gains right there roughly yeah I think that's perfectly 500 percent gains today from that low bubble to right there she fell down here to 007, 007, and uh, went sideways for a bit. Then it fell, crashed onto the 20-day, tried to hang on to that, didn't hold on to that, has fallen under it, and it looks like she's going to try to scoop back up onto that 20. We do have a cross, well, it's not even a crossover. She never got underneath the pink. Looks like she's trying to push back up on the PPO. The MACD is going for that crossover right now. Looks like we still have a wee bit of excitement around this, but I got to be honest, folks. I don't know what's going on with this company. They're not making any money. They got lots of products. You go into their news, you will see they've made a few deals. So what's happening here, I don't know. What this company, uh, Jim Morrison from Emergent, is going to do with this company, who knows? Nobody's told us anything. All we know is that Emergent 
made a deal to get Region Bio Wellness, and nobody told us that Region Bio Wellness had an investment in CNGT. And now CNGT is under the umbrella of Emergent as well. So you may want to actually consider Emergent, which, by the way, EMGE fell today. Heck, it's been falling for four or five days here. So today's filings made no impact on this company whatsoever. I don't know if anybody's put two and two together. You must have. I mean, if you know why CNGT is running, you've got to know that Emergent is part of it. So why this didn't get any sympathy, I don't know. Maybe it'll get it tomorrow. It's a curious watch. I thought I'd bring it to your attention and see what you think. So that's a strange lot of stocks there. You've got one that's made a merger, had a big run, but we're not quite sure what they're doing. Looks like they got a lot of business of their own, but where's the money, right? And then, then you've got Canagistics, the same question there. Where's the bread, dog? Where's the money? You've got all these products. You've made deals here recently. Why aren't you making any money? And now they've become an asset of another company. I don't know where that's going to go. And the middle one, Eyeless undervalued, under the radar, come on folks, an increase of 550% from three months to go from three million to $20 million, that is impressive. That's the one I like, even though it doesn't look very tempting right now, as uh, Warren Buffett would say, love what others are hating and hate what others are loving. And it looks like Eyeless is getting a lot of hate right now for no good reason. So do some DD. You may find some answers to some of the questions I've posed. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.